What is going on guys? My name is Dimitri and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to break down for you guys Mint.com or Mint the app. It is a app by Intuit that can kind of give you all of your budgeting and savings and just personal finance needs in one place. It aggregates all the different things that you need to organize your personal finance and it's something that I've been using for the past few months to get my personal finances in a row Get all my ducks in a row, because I'm I'm adulting now. Cries into coffee. No, but in all seriousness, it's an awesome app and I really do like it. But before we dive into the specific specific the specificities of this topic, if you guys could please hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, I would really appreciate it. So it's a free application that lets you essentially go through and do a lot of different nice things. So I have it on my phone here and you can use the desktop version as well. But if you go through this application, as you guys can see, there's a place for cash and you can kind of combine your savings and your checking as well as different apps like Venmo or the Cash App and you can put everything together there. You can even add, add PayPal as well. And then if you go to down below here, you can also have your loans and investments and everything else that kind of aggregates all your different net worth. So as you guys can see, there is a net worth category there's a spending category. You can track how your spending is going this month as well as you can do some other nice things. So on a monthly basis, as you can see in this tab, you can set budgets and you can see what your cash flow is. You can see what your top monthly budget spending categories are and you can check what your expenses and your income is like. So there's a section for each of those. It's really nice. Uh, I'm somebody who likes to set up a little bit of a different kind of budget personally but we'll get into the specifics of that. You can also set up your different payments. So I have a car payment at the moment as I bought a car earlier this year and it's nice to be able to track what that car payment is and see on a weekly and monthly basis what kind of expenses I have coming up. I try to always pay early with these kind of things because that's just better for credit reasons, but it's nice to see when my next bill is due on things like my car payments and such. This is a nice little notification section here which shows things like bill date due. So on October 2nd, I would have had my car payment due. I have already paid that. So it's nice to know when it's due, but it's nice to see that you can actually pay that already. It gives you notifications if you have high spending for any sort of reason, if anything out of the blue happens. It's nice to know those sort of things uh, kind of keeps the trends going for yourself. And I just really like that. You can also set goals as you can see right below this like upcoming bill section. There's a goal section, which is nice if you want to save up for something or just plan for retirement or anything like that. It's a nice app that gets all of your needs in one place. I'm serious about that. Like you have all the options in the world regarding getting things organized with your personal finances here. There's some nice categorical uh, locations here so you can see how September spending is currently since it's the month of September and it kind of breaks down different finances. So I'm somebody who has a maybe a weird kind of organization, but for me, if it's not into a specific category like my investments or my business expenses or gas, it, it's just miscellaneous. I just kind of push it in there because that's like my extra spending that aren't that shouldn't be a part of my like normal. Like, this is stuff I don't have to spend money on. Once I get into living on my own and such, yeah, I'll probably make a food budget, but that's that's not what I have to deal with now. So you can also set up a income and budget area as well. So for income, for me, I just kind of have it spread out into two different categories, whether it's my paycheck or it's my uh, YouTube income. So that is something where it's like, you know, the YouTube income is, is something I have to predict kind of more than the static income. And if you're somebody who has other streams of income, it's nice. For example, if you own real estate or uh, have any sort of other streams of income like a side hustle or if you if you have one job where you're working at a consistent nine to five and then maybe you deliver pizza on the side or do uber eats or something like that you can kind of track that as well it's nice to categorize things so you have an idea of where the money is coming in from so then you can also track your expenses and make a budget so for me i have a budget set up in a different way like i mentioned there's like an auto payment i have i have how much I expect to spend on gas and fuel. Uh, tolls are something that really uh, add up in the area that I'm from driving to work when that was a thing before I started working remote. And then business services is kind of like my um, buffer sort of, I mean, I do have some like static expenses for YouTube things. I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna have to buy any equipment for a long time. 
um, outside of maybe upgrading computer in a few years, but there's, there's really not much else I have to do at this point. I have um, a student loan that I still have to pay off from college. That is obviously, you know, I still have to, I can still wait a little bit before paying that off, but it's in my budget and then I adjust from there. And then I have uh, my financial stuff. So I have a set amount, I always max out my Roth IRA and then I put a little money towards the S&P 500. So that should be in my budget as well, in my opinion. Your budget should include your planned investments because if you don't plan for those investments, it's not ideal. You're probably not going to get as much in the end and you're probably not missing out on much if you if you do this. Like That's not like I'm depriving myself of anything by planning on putting money towards investments. If anything, I'm going to be pretty happy when I'm retired. And then miscellaneous expenses, like I said, I, I have like this buffer period or buffer range of okay, how much money am I probably gonna spend in a month outside of my normal expenses? Uh, and that's a large range for me at the moment. I never have hit the cap, uh, but it's good to know like, cause I have a savings transfer I wanna hit every month based off of my income and anything that's like over. So if like my income goes over that threshold or if my miscellaneous expenses are below it since I have everything else kind of pretty static, the expenses, uh, I kind of do the little bit of quick math there and whatever extra money comes in that doesn't come out, I can kind of make that extra movement to savings or I can put towards different bills that I have, whether it be the car payment or the loan so I can kind of uh, not accrue as much interest on the loan. Yeah, could I put more money into the S&P 500 or something? Uh, yeah, it's very true. I mean, it's kind of all in what you want to do, right? I mean, the least optimal thing is putting things just in your savings. Um, remember, I'm not a financial advisor. This is I'm conjecture, but yeah, I don't really want to not pay off my loans. I, I want to kind of just get that done, not throw everything at once, but kind of decrease the principal on some of those as I could go along. But, so, but outside of that, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. I think the app's pretty great to budget things out and set things up in a way that can get your finances in a right spot. I am somebody who really thinks being organized has helped me improve my life overall. And knowing where your income is coming in from and how many uh, static expenses you have, I don't really have any subscriptions I pay for at the moment outside of Super for hosting my website. So it's nice to see like, you know, I, I don't really have many expenses outside of real tangible things like car payments. Uh, and knowing that it, it kind of, it helps me move forward and and know that you know living at home is the right option at the moment and i'm gonna have way more expenses when i move out and, and i'm aware of that and i'm appreciative of the situation i have and i think just having mint has helped me organize things and make plans towards okay what are my investing goals what are my goals towards you know eventually getting getting a house or because I've always wanted to have a multifamily property that kind of stuff so it's one of those things where you gotta you gotta make plans in order to have these tangible uh, investments made in your future and I think for me mints helped me get there quicker so with that being said thank you guys so much for watching this video I know it was different than previous ones and I don't have any notion things for you as always if you want to check out my notion templates go to riseproductive.com slash notion templates and I'll help you out there with that being said thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one